Mark chapter 16 When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. Mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 8 I'm standing in the churchyard of St Mary Magdalene South Burstead the mother church of Bognor Regis where it is my privilege to be vicar you know I am surrounded here by graves and the truth is although local people have been buried here for hundreds of years not one of them died of COVID-19 whatever happens to us, something in the end will cause us to die. One out of one of us will die. It will happen to each and every one of us. And the question is, what are you trusting in? Where is your hope for death? We have here today our final instalment in Mark's Gospel. The women have gone to the tomb. The Sabbath is over. It's the first day of the week, Sunday morning, really early. But guess what? They're looking for the wrong Jesus. They're met by, Mark says, a young man. It could be an angel. He says to them, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene. They're looking for dead Jesus. He was crucified. But guess what? He is not here. He has risen. He's alive. And that is fantastic news. It means that when Jesus said that he was the Son of God, and that was considered to be blasphemy, and they killed him for it, God is saying that, yes, Jesus really is my Son, and I'm raising him back to life. Peter one of the disciples that badly let Jesus down. He, along with the other disciples, can have a relationship restored once again with Jesus. He can be forgiven. And that is possible because Jesus is now alive. Forgiveness is possible. And what Jesus said is true. You know, he said that the shepherd would be struck and the sheep would be scattered. And now he will meet them again in Galilee and will lead them on. The flock will be reunited. So what are these women? Well, they're frightened. They're full of fear, which is such a shame. They're given a task to do, to go and tell the others. Now, Mark has a strange ending. And so much so that people in the past have not been quite happy with it, so they thought they'd better write their own. And it seems as though verses 9 to 20 were added on afterwards by an attempt to give a different ending. It's just vaguely possible that the page got lost of the original, but that probably isn't the case. In many respects, it's a fantastic ending because it allows us to reflect on what are we going to do with what we have heard. Are we going to be followers of Jesus? And if so... Are we going to be full of fear, frightened, like these women were? Or will we be full of faith 
and confidence in the resurrection of Jesus, that he is alive. And the fact that he has got through death and come out the other side means that he can get us through our death as well. So are you trusting in your own performance? Is that where your hope is? Or in the performance of Jesus? We can have confidence to tell other people, which is what he wants us to do, about the good news of Jesus. He really is the Messiah, the Christ. He really is the Son of God. And he can give us eternal life forever. What are you going to do with this great news? Are you going to be frightened and fearful and keep it to yourself? Or will you proclaim it and live it out confidently, following Jesus for the rest of your days? Father, thank you so much that Jesus has risen. He is alive. Thank you that Jesus has beaten death once and for all. I put my faith and hope in Jesus' death and resurrection so that I too can have eternal life with you. Thank you that Jesus is alive. Amen.